Throughout this third lockdown, just like the second and the first, the British public have been very good at following the rules. It's why since the start of this lockdown, daily cases have plummeted from 60,000 a day to 12,000. However, Britain still has the highest death toll in Europe, and so the government needs someone to blame. It's why we keep seeing increasingly hysterical public information adverts making out the public to be the real villain of this pandemic. On that, on that front, this is the latest output from the Home Office. Um, we can take a look at this now. We've unfortunately had to take the sound off. YouTube sort of has these, these automatic systems, which mean that if we played the, the blaring drum and bass, which is in the background to this, this Home Office video, um, it might get taken down. But for now, you can see it's, it's quite bold. You shouldn't make your own pub. It's playing really, I think, on, on a, 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 an advert we saw in the 90s and the noughties, which were um, respectively telling you not to download videos because you, you wouldn't steal um, a video from the shop, so you shouldn't download them. But here you can say, you shouldn't have baby showers. You shouldn't be meeting up. Um, and meeting up is against the law. And this is you know better if you have that really aggressive drum and bass in the background. We've spoken a few times on this show actually about the public health adverts we've seen from the government. I think this is probably my favourite one so far. What did you make of it? 90s nostalgia is about like belly tops and Destiny's Child. It's not about like these corny, although I do kind of, it did make me feel nostalgic despite my best efforts, but still like these, these campaigns by the government are just so relentlessly patronizing and annoying and just miss the point because you know as we mentioned when we talked about that poster campaign um a few weeks ago where it was you know pictures of people in on ventilators with the slogan being like you know look him in the eyes and tell him that you need to that you can't work from home for example and i just reiterate what i said um when we talked about that poster campaign which is that these guilt tripping and you know uh uh, kind of harrowing, punitive poster campaigns and 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 campaigns in general shouldn't be directed to people who you know have had unclear messaging, have had irresponsible lockdown policy, who are being forced to go into work and therefore get on the tube, etc. They should be directed to MPs and bosses who have created the conditions for us to still not have this virus under control or not find a way to um to 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 ha to have this virus without it killing so many people um you know these posters these these videos should be you know that you shouldn't tell people to take a deadly virus on on the chin um you shouldn't open restaurants and cafes and shops when it will cause thousands and thousands of people to die over christmas just to help you know, companies make their Christmas bottom line. Um, you know, you shouldn't tell people that they need to self-isolate when they have symptoms, when you don't provide, especially self-employed people, the, the, the means to do that. And you also shouldn't tell people to not go into work unless it's absolutely necessary, but then give their bosses the jurisdiction to decide if it's necessary or not. And it's also this other way of responding to the crisis and responding to this this pandemic which is essentially a crisis of care in many ways and say that instead of revamping those infrastructures of care and understanding how to rebuild them in a way that enables people to take decisions and make and take action that is in the interest of the public health you instead say we're just going to respond with like policing and punitive um, and hyper individualized and get people to blame one another it not only deflects from your own failings as you know the institutions whose role and responsibility it is is to make sure that we have a coordinated response um, and one that is informed by the science but it also helps to again retrench this conservative ideology that the way that we deal with crisis is to blame people next to us to blame people who are more vulnerable than us and you know to to just turn to systems of punishment and policing I mean, it's quite simple, really, isn't it? Does having a baby shower or a house party in the middle of a pandemic help spread it? Yes. Is that the reason why we have the highest death toll in Europe? Absolutely not. People have been, on the whole, very, very, very strict in terms of following the rules. The reason we have an incredibly high death toll is all of the reasons Dahlia has just said there. We, we go into lockdowns very, very late. We haven't paid people to self-isolate for the past year. You know, th these are really simple things that the government has refused to do. 
Um, and they are the failings that we point out regularly on this show. If you do um, want to watch more Navara Media, please do subscribe to the channel. We go live every Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 7 p.m. and put out videos every day. Now, I've said the government is using parties to distract from their own failures. That's absolutely true. It also doesn't mean none are happening. Last Halloween, police struggled to break up a rave of between 500 and 700 people in Yate, which is outside Bristol. Now, one of those in attendance was 18-year-old George Parsons, who, along with five others, received a £200 fine from a Bristol magistrate last week, according to the prosecutor. And I quote, police attended at 2 p.m. on November the 1st. By that time, there were between 30 and 50 people remaining. They were ordered to disperse all the defendants refused to leave. Now, why am I telling you all of this? Seems like a fairly minor case. I mean, it is a fairly minor case, but it did spawn this fairly entertaining video. This is George Parsons leaving court last week. It's gone viral. Do you have anything yeah. to say about the offence? Um, yeah, raves aren't anti-lockdown, they're anti-capitalism. Uh, and, you know, the threat of spreading the virus. Uh, fear is a go of control. Uh, people are affected by the modern way of life, whether there's raves on or not. So if someone became seriously ill as a result? Um, I've had so many of my friends seriously ill um, through the modern way of life, and so raves are a way to respect them. Like that. That's enough. Raves aren't anti-lockdown, they're anti-capitalism. Then asked about the threat of spreading the virus, he says fear is the currency of control. Now, I want to be clear before we talk about this, because he seems like a nice kid. He actually reminds me of people I knew when I was 18. So I don't want to be sort of like, you know, joining this pile on to say that the, the, the pandemic is his fault. The pandemic is clearly not his fault. Um, but some of those, I mean, I mean, the, the points are bullshit, really. And, and some of them are kind of interesting. I suppose that there is this sort of strain of like rave culture which again, I do have a lot of like warmth towards, but has brought into a, a funny politics around around this pandemic, which I mean, first of all, our raves really anti-capitalist. And two, I mean, fear is the current, we're not just, all of the warnings that we get about spreading the virus aren't just to control us. You know, it, it's because literally this is really dangerous. <laughs> what, what, what did you make of that clip? I mean, I don't have time for this argument because we all know, we all have those comrades that that like this kind of shtick. I don't have time for that outside of a pandemic, let alone <laughs> in a pandemic. You know, raves aren't anti-capitalist. They're especially not anti-capitalist when they're happening in the middle of an airborne virus disease pandemic. You know, we don't throw people, especially people who are more vulnerable than us, workers, their lives and livelihoods under the bus for raves. So... Let me just clarify that. But also, like, as you mentioned, like, he's a kid. He's doing what kids do. And, like, the thing is, and the thing that you mentioned as well is that, yeah, there are some people who break the rules. There are some people who are still having parties. Da, 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 da. That's true in every country. There are always going to be people who are going to be, like, who are just going to, you know, feel invincible. They tend to be younger men who just feel like they're, you know, they can just, like, they're invincible and their health is, like, forever and, you know, but that exists in every country. That's clearly not the reason we have the death toll that we have. But I also do have PTSD from this video just because I sometimes have to spend time with, with this nonsense, like, in general. And I'm just like, no. And also, I mean, he's an 18-year-old kid. I know bloody 50-year-old adults with, like, full jobs who make this exact same argument. And I'm just like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so George, George Parsons, if you're watching, slap on the wrist for going to that rave. Also, you know, raves are anti-lockdowns. They're not particularly anti-capitalist. Um, but, you know, we we know who our enemy is. It's not you. It's, it's, it's Boris Johnson and all of those bosses who are forcing their workers to go into the office, even though we're in the middle of a pandemic and they could quite easily work from home. Uh -huh.